checking out today's Schoology Day 13 written instructions, we're going to be starting up on GPA spreadsheet. We're going to do two things to it. The first one's pretty easy. The second one's not that difficult, but there's a little bit more detail to it. For starters, we're going to be adding in GPA points. I'm going to come to my GPA spreadsheet. My hope is that yours is looking pretty similar to this. Each day when you leave class or leave school, if there's something from tech class that you don't have finished, I would assign it as homework. So hopefully yesterday you have everything in place and we are missing something before we can say that our GPA spreadsheet is finished. For trimester one, we're gonna be asking students to enter in what are called GPA points. Now friends, these come straight from the table that we put in yesterday. I'm moving my pointer around on the green, yellow, and red table. As I look at this first grade that I put in for math, it's an A minus. As I come to the table and look at A minus, a student would earn 3.7 GPA points. So in the column next to the letter grade, I'm gonna enter in the number 3.7. Notice that number does stay centered because I had formatted it previously for centering. Back to the table, for a student who has a B in a class, a B indicates three GPA points. We don't need to enter anything in for break. For English, if a student has an A, well, they have the best GPA you can have, and that's a four. For this C minus, 1.7. And finally, for your elective class, uh, if you have an A, back to the table, that is four points. Would you please look at your letter grades, take the number of GPA points that you earn for each grade, and enter them on the spreadsheet as I've done at this time. One of the final things that we need to do for our GPA spreadsheet is add in a math formula that's gonna calculate your grade point average. Adding in the formula isn't too difficult. You're gonna see me do it um, once or twice, and then there's just a couple other little details that you're gonna to wanna to do to be finished with your GPA spreadsheet. I'm gonna walk you through each step. Check your volume level, make sure you have your headphones on, and pay attention here very carefully. As I come to my GPA spreadsheet, I'm gonna to go to cell E12. If yours is set up like mine, um, you're, you'll be in E12. Nonetheless, we want to leave a blank cell underneath our grades and then to the one that's highlighted straight across from grade and points. I'm going to type in the three letters G, P, A. And I'm going to format those so that they're bold. And I'm going to turn on right align, not left or center, but right. I'm going to have it all the way to the right hand part of the cell. And now, in cell F12, right next to GPA, I'm going to put in something called a formula. As we work across the toolbar, we've experienced a lot of these tools, either here in Google Sheets or any other Google application. As we work our way all the way to the end of it, you're going to see a Greek letter down here. And as I hold my pointer over it, it says functions. When I click on the down arrow next to functions, there's different math things that I can do. And the one that I'm gonna choose here is average. It makes sense because the A in GPA is grade point average. So I'm gonna click on average. Now it's gonna put the beginning of a mathematical formula in there. The equal sign means it's a math formula followed by the word average. And then there's some parentheses. And the spreadsheet's waiting for me to tell it what numbers to find the average of. Pretty easy, I'm gonna take my pointer and I'm gonna to go to where my first GPA points are. For me, this is cell F5. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna select this range of cells that you see me selecting right here. When I let go, these cells where I'm moving my pointer are selected. And it says, find the average of F5 through F10. And to tell the computer yes, I'm simply gonna press enter. And my GPA of 3.28 shows up on the screen. The only formatting that you need to do for the GPA of 3.28 is to center it. Even if you have all A's, 
and these are all fours, and you know this is going to be four, I'm going to ask you to put the formula in anyway. Would you please follow those instructions I just gave? In a moment, you're going to see this also in slow motion and have your GPA so it shows up in this cell. At this point, we're almost finished with our GPA. There's one or two adjustments that you might need to make. Everyone needs to make one. Some students might need to make two adjustments here. Now, the way that my math turned out, mine came out to 3.28. Some of you might do the formula and it comes out to a long decimal, 3.27989765858. If you put in your formula and you have a long decimal like this, it's no problem. While you're in that cell, there's a button on the toolbar to help you with that. And I'm holding my pointer over it. It says decrease decimal places. You would want to just decrease till you got to two decimal places. That will happen to a few kids out there just because of their numbers. And that's okay. So everything I just did there, the, the only thing you would need to do is if you have a whole bunch of decimals right here where I'm moving my pointer, use that button here called decrease decimal place. I'm going to click on undo to get rid of all of that because it doesn't need to be there. One other thing, and all students do need to do this. I'm going to use a copy and paste right now. We want this to show up for not only the first trimester, but also trimester two and trimester three. Pretty easy process. I'm going to highlight both these cells where it says GPA and then it has the GPA. It happens to be cells E12 and F12 and I'll press control C to copy. I'm gonna come over here to G12, place the highlight inside cell G12 and press control V. And then inside cell I12, I'm also gonna press control V. Now don't be alarmed, it's giving you um, an error. If during the second and third trimesters you wanna keep track of your GPA, because you'll be in either art or PE class during that time, you would just come here, put your grades in, and notice that when you start to put numbers in this column, it's gonna calculate your GPA. So the formula is there. It looks like there's a mistake of some sort. It's because it's trying to divide by zero, and it's giving you that math error. If you need to, please reduce the number of decimal places, and then also copy and paste so that it could sh uh, show up and work for your second and third trimesters. At this point, in the instructions, if you ever see update your GPA spreadsheet, it means go and check your grades. If any grades changed, change the grade, change the letter grade in the letter grade column, change your GPA points, comes from this chart, and you'll notice that your GPA will automatically update. Suppose in math, I have an A, and I change it to four points. Do you think my GPA will go up or down as a result when I press enter? If you said up, you were right. Make those adjustments and get ready to head into a different direction. I'm here on typing.com now and before we get going on a new typing lesson today, I'd like to just talk about something I'd like you to tie in with your digital portfolio. Here on typing.com, when you finish a lesson, it should turn into a shade of green 
and it shows you your stars and some things like we talked about. What we're going to do is this. We're going to make an adjustment on our portfolio. I'm heading over. I'm going to open up my portfolio. And I'm going to be reporting to slide number, I think it's slide number three. Nope, slide number four. Typing.com. We've created this slide. We haven't done anything with it yet. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to insert a table. We've done a table one other time. If you haven't memorized how to do a table, simply go to insert. You're going to go to table. And you'll see this at Schoology. The size of the table is four by four. When you've put the table in, we want to use the dot handles to stretch it out across the remaining part of my screen that I haven't used yet. I'm going to make an adjustment to the table. Instead of having the line colors be that gray color, we're kind of inspired here by the blue and the green that we see at typing.com. I'm going to choose a shade of blue. It might not be exact, but try to, let's try to get ours as close to this shade of blue as we can. Back at my portfolio, I'm going to change the color to a blue that looks pretty much like that there. It might be a little bit different shade. And I'm going to thicken those lines up. I'm going to ask you guys to use a 12-point thick uh, line there so you can see the grid there, which is actually called a table. And what we're going to do is this. Whenever we finish a typing lesson, we're going to take a partial screenshot. So right now I'm going to hold down. I want to get rid of that for a second. Right now I'm going to hold down Control, Shift, and then the screenshot key. You'll see the screen go a little bit dim. And I'm going to show you two things here. I'm going to show you, first of all, if you were to grab this entire green thing and, and let go, be sure to copy it to your clipboard. I'm going to bring it over to my portfolio, and I'm going to paste Control v Well, JF in space was the first lesson. What we want to do is we want to get it to a size where it's going to fit in that box. I'm going to make a couple adjustments to it um, so that it kind of fits. And if you look at it there, you'll notice that we might have a little issue if we do it like that. What I'd like to be able to do is I'd like for both you and I to be able to read this. And it's not very readable. At typing.com, watch the screenshot that I take now. I'm going to do Control, Shift, Screenshot key. And I am going to start in that same corner, but instead of going all the way across, I'm just going to go to where uh, the amount of time that it took me to do that lesson is. I'm going to let go and copy it to my clipboard. And if I paste this one into the second box, I think what you'll notice is a pretty good result. You'll be able to actually read it much, much better. So, um, so we can actually read it. So this one right here, JF in space, we only do it like that. We're going to take the control shift screenshot. I can do this pretty quick now. Take our partial screenshot. Copy it to clipboard. I'm going to paste. Bring that in. Just resize it. And you can see how we can read it now. Now, students coming up, it's not really coming out next week. You have a typing lesson that you'll be turning in for a grade. We haven't started it yet. Uh, but I want you to be aware that um, I'll be seeing the slide and I'd like to see the finished lessons here. Many students probably finished a typing lesson called DEI. If you haven't finished DEI, get that one finished as well. And today, we're going to continue on with a typing lesson called CGN. CGN. So to finish up here at Schoology, make sure that you're signed in. You should have JF in space, URNK, as well as DEI finished. And then you should be going on CGN. At typing.com, if you finish those four lessons, look like to think about doing this. And now you can go to the intermediate session and just start with the first lesson. You're going to see words. And just start working on this intermediate lesson. Just go as far as you can. This shouldn't interfere with any of the other work that you need to do, but when you finish with the typing lesson and you're looking for something to do, intermediate would be a great place to go.